Do you want to have more fun with your magic library? Me too. And I'm going to share with you how to do that in this episode of Erudite Magic by showing you my process that is guaranteed to help you explore your library and have a ton of fun in the process. Not only will I outline my process so you can use this amazing technique, I'll also walk you through a very specific example so you'll know how to do exactly what I'm doing. Now, it's important for you to know not to get hung up on the specifics of my subject. This will work for whatever topic interests you. I'm confident that if you follow along for the whole process, you'll find it an exhilarating way to make use of your magic books and propel you into the pages that you have on your shelves. Now, how do I know that this is a topic that you want to know? The internet is full of what's the best questions and you know who you are. What's the best torn and restored card? What's the best cups and balls? If that's you or you've been interested in responses to those threads, keep watching because this will help you once and for all decide what's best for you using the resources available to you. Let's say, like me, you want to research the best center tear. By the way, let me take a quick aside to say that this is one of the most powerful techniques you can master if you're into mentalism. The center tear is a flexible tool that will serve you in many capacities, and it seems like real mind reading. Anyway, I already have a version that I do, the Austrian Perfected Center Tear, but I was recently doing some research for a business card center tear. Why a business card? Well, business cards are organic. You typically will have one with you, and if you wanted to write something down on it, it has a blank back, so the procedure that I have in my mind just feels very natural. But it is a much stiffer paper, and it is very different from using thinner or other types of paper. And this is fairly typical in my experience. You're not sure if you want to perform the effect or if you're just looking for ideas to add to what you already do. But whatever it is, decide on a topic to research. That's step one. Now it's time to get into some magic books. But just before we do that, the first thing to do is to perform some cursory research online on Dennis Bear's Conjuring Archive. And I say cursory because it's not completely comprehensive. For example, even though Center Tear has over 160 entries on the website, it's actually missing many resources. And I know this because of the reading that I've done. But that means that you'll need to use some of your own knowledge of where you can find certain things, which is always kind of a fun challenge to see if you can remember where you've seen something or what authors might have something to say about your subject. But get the books off of your shelves and put them in a place where you can sit a while and read and grab some bookmarks because you're going to need them. Once you've decided on a topic and done a little bit of preliminary research, now you can start to go through Dennis Bear's Conjuring Archive about the topic that you're interested in and look for the books that you might already have on your shelf. At this point, I find it easiest to go ahead and write some of those down that look interesting to me and then take that list over to my shelf so I can pull off books and get a good head start on the research we're going to be doing. In my particular case with the center tear, I had some from Al Coran, Al Baker, Bruce Bernstein, the Tarbell series, Barry Richardson, among others. As I mentioned, it isn't quite complete because I know from personal experience that Doug DeMint in Calculated Thoughts has an entire section dedicated to the center tear and specifically about using a business card for the center tear. The cool part about this research is that while you're doing it, you may come across books that are not in your library for one reason or another. And at this point, you'll have to decide does it look interesting enough that you want to add it to your library for research purposes? This is where it starts to come in really handy to have built that reference library. As we talk about having a magic library and having more fun with it, maybe that concept is slightly foreign to you because you don't own that many books. No problem. We can change that with the sponsor of this week's episode, Don's Magic and Books. Don is one of the best retailers of magic books online. And specifically, if you're in the market for gently used books that may be out of print or harder to find. Don specializes in offering these kinds of books along with the latest and greatest, and he does all of it at extremely fair prices. If you're in the United States and you purchase a certain minimum amount, then you will qualify for free shipping. I love shopping with Don, and I'm so glad that he's a sponsor, especially since he focuses on magic books, something that matters to all of us as erudite magicians. If you haven't already visited Don's website, I'm going to drop a link down in the description below. And if you're already one of Don's loyal customers, then be sure to check out his website frequently. He's always adding something new, and there are very few copies of these older and out of print books. I wouldn't want you to miss out. I don't know what you're waiting for. Head over to his website to check out the great selection that he has to offer and enjoy building a great reference tool. 
After we've completed step one of deciding on a topic, step two, doing some preliminary research, step three is really easy. It's just going to be flipping through the books to look at the specific areas and tricks that you wrote down earlier when you were looking on the Conjuring Archive. As you look up the references, give the tricks kind of a once-over to see if it has what you're looking for. And if so, keep it in the pile. If not, thank it for being there for you and put it back on the shelf. Specifically for me, there were a few flaws with the things that I found. Under the al Quran presentation, it uses much thinner paper and has to do with a one-handed tear and steal of the center, which in itself is actually pretty cool. So while it wasn't what I was looking for, it's giving me ideas for things I might want to look at in the future. The closest things that I saw were Barry Richardson has a specific business card tear, and it's fine. It's just, it doesn't feel as smooth to me as the version that I already do. And while Doug DeMint has some great thoughts about the business card center tear as well, it felt a little bit knacky still with the way you tear and have to place the cards your hands don't seem completely natural to me. And it has two different peak areas. He does cover some ways to push the participant to write in a particular area. So I'm learning a few things as I go along. And there were also several write-ups that made use of a stolen center as opposed to a live peek at the information. Based on my primary performing conditions, the steal and look later won't work for me. So those references go back on the shelf. By the way, this is another chance to find other resources as many books are really good about referencing their inspirations and predecessors. So if you see something that interests you in the notes or bibliographical information, stop what you're doing and add those books to your pile. After you've decided what might serve your purposes, it's time to go deeper and make some notes. You should now have a pile of resources from your library that seem like they could help you in your quest for the best version of the trick that works for you. Now we start writing down what we like or don't like about the method or constraints. In my example of the business card center tear, I see themes pop up. For example, how many times is the paper torn? How much fidgeting do you have to do with it as you're tearing, turning pieces or folding them in specific ways? How large or flexible is the peak area? Is it in the center of the paper? Is it on the top or the bottom? I'll make notes about each along with the source book and page number to make it easier to go back later and pick up my research where I leave off. Now we want to compare the methods. After we've made the necessary annotations in our journal or on a pad of paper or whatever you have, it's time to start comparing. The sooner you do this after starting your research, the easier it will be since the ideas will be fresh on your mind. But it will work regardless of how long the process takes you, so don't despair if it feels like you're a slow reader or that this might take a while. After all, spending time with your books is half the fun. The other half is improving your magical knowledge and coming up with something truly unique that works for you. Back to my example of the center tear, I found that I didn't really like the awkward hand positions or tears on a business card size piece of paper. Ultimately, that means I didn't really discover anything that fit my criteria. But that doesn't mean that my research was in vain. It just means that it will continue. And frankly, it feels like I don't need to use business cards when this pad of paper, which I always have with me, will work better for my needs. And even that small piece of discovery is worth the effort. Some people will be tempted to cheat during this process by looking online, for example, the Magic Cafe, where I started with what's the best, or by looking at one book that shares many methods. For example, Switch by John Lovick for the $100 bill change, or the Open Prediction Project, the Nail Writer Anthology, etc. These books and methods definitely have their place, but I think you'll agree with me that it's way more fun to make the discoveries yourself as you dig through your books and explore your own library. Pulling books off the shelf will get you excited for the reading to come and will familiarize you with not only what you have, but what the contents of each book are. And worst case scenario, once you've made the pile of books, now you have to do something with them. If you wanna make this exercise into a truly great and valuable experience, consider taking some notes. I've given you a few tips on things to jot down, but if you're totally unsure where to begin or how to journal, then check out this video I made specifically to help you get started. As always, my friends, thank you for watching, and until next time, keep reading.